Hello, this is Nick here from Gorgon Reviews, and I'm speaking with Nick Tomney, director of the film What You Wish For. What You Wish For is a thriller film about a down-on-his-luck chef with a crippling gambling problem, running away uh, from all the issues. Uh, he meets a fellow chef friend in Latin America who is living up in luxury. Why? How? Well, that's what the movie has to tell you. So first, thank you for spending your time here today, Nick. Thank you for having me. First up, as I always like to get to know the director better, what is the first movie you remember seeing in theaters um the film that i remember seeing in terms of like me as a filmmaker you know like wanting to be a filmmaker was blade runner um and i just loved the whole science fiction and noir mashup of that movie and i felt like i mean from the opening shot you know particularly that opening shot you know it just it just dissolves up and there's that wide shot and the music and i was like what is this you know um and that really made me an impact on me um, but then after that, I think it was the seventies American movies, you know, like I, uh, my dad, I was like, I was born in the seventies. And so my dad had a, a VC, one of the, you know, we had an early, we had a beta VCR. It was, it was during this, the VHS versus beta max beta, um, war. And he bought the beta because like, that was a better system, but there were in, and I'm from Australia and this, so uh, there was a big row of, of VHS and it was like you know, only a few betas, um, and so I went through all of those and, but then they had all these really cool films from the seventies, you know, American movies. And so they were the, they were the ones that I, you know, I watched. Awesome. Uh, so your first feature length film came out in 2010, the perfect host. Um, that wasn't your first time directing though. How did you personally get into the movie game? I started as a, an assistant editor. Um, and then I became an editor, primarily working on commercials in Sydney. Uh, and then I, and then I directed a short film called The Host, which is what The Perfect Host is based on. And that did really well and, you know, got me some notices and got me attention. And uh, I found my way. I got kind of bored being in Australia and my wife and I got married and we were like, let's do something radical. So we moved to New York. We thought it'd be just be a couple of years, but it's been like a lot longer. Um, and then I just kept cutting in New York and uh, developing that feat, the, the host into a feature film, The Perfect Host. Um, and, you know, and then I, and occasionally I direct commercials, you know. Um, you also wrote The Perfect Host, but you had uh, Krishna Jones as a co-writer on it. But for what you wish for, you are the sole writer. So how different was writing those two scripts for you? So, well, the, the Krishna and I wrote The Host together as the short, you know, mm -hmm. we spent a, a long time working on that together. And then we we worked out the first draft of The Perfect Host together in Sydney and then I moved to New York and I sort of did all the other drafts on my own um and then after the perfect host I, I've sort of written I've kind of written about like two to two to three scripts a year for like 10 years just been that's what I've been doing I've just been like trying to get them going and I've had like four or five almost happen so by the time I got to what you wish for what you wish for is like my 14th script or something so I was um I was used to writing alone a lot easier now he left poor Krishna in uh, Australia. <laughs> he's, he's doing all right. He's, you know, he's not, I mean, you know, he, Krishna's a musician. That's his primary occupation. He's a singer songwriter. Yeah. yeah. So this was a, <laughs> this is a little uh, detour for him, I think. Well, I, I obviously haven't seen the other 13 or so scripts in between. Um, but at least for these two movies, there's a common theme, obviously, of abnormal dinners, I would say. Uh, any I know. <laughs> particular reason for that? That was I know I knew I knew it when I was I was thinking, man, this is just like that one. It's not the, the other thirteen are quite different, you know. This just <laughs> happens to be. I think you know honestly, I think the reason why they're similar is because, like I said, I'd, I'd actually had a few opportunities to make films, and I had a movie star and money and this and that and that. You know, things just keep falling over because there's this. You know, you've got to, there's this alchemy that has to happen with like all these things lining up at the same time to make a movie. And if one of those things doesn't happen, then the film doesn't get made, you know. So I just kind of got over the sort of asking for permission aspect of filmmaking, which is sort of necessary. Um, and then COVID hit and I was like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make a movie. I've just, I've just got to produce a film. So looking at the scripts that I had, you know, this one, because of its contained nature, I thought, well, this is achievable. I can produce this. I can raise the money to do this. Um, and so, yeah, so it happens to also be about a dinner, but that's more, I mean, it, you know, that, that's kind of coincidental, but it's also because of the, it's production friendly in a way, you know? Yeah. Um, 
one of my favorite parts about what you wish for was how confused I was about a third of the way through it. Um, when, uh, main characters, you know, alone at that point, and then people start coming to his house that he doesn't know. Um, and he was just bullshitting his way through conversations that he clearly had no idea what he was talking about and doing quite badly. Um, why did you decide to keep the viewer in the dark for so long before kind of revealing what was going on? Um, well, because because the film is subjective. It's told from Ryan's point of view. And so we we entered the film with him. And we only we only we only have information given to us when it's given to him. Um, and by and so by doing that, we we hopefully align ourselves with that character. He's the portal into the film. And hopefully that makes the experience of watching it just that much more engaging and suspenseful because you don't know, just like Ryan doesn't know. Yeah. Um, if you were in a similar situation to him, uh, what would you do? A spoiler for you. I think I'd probably do what he did. I mean, I wrote the script. I mean, you have the answer. It's the film. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, And obviously it took about, you know, 13 years to get to the point for your second feature film. And you talked about the struggles of getting this, uh, you know, finding the right people and things falling through. Um, Do your next plans after this one hopefully involve revisiting some scripts that you really wish could have been? Or do you think you've moved on from them? Uh, yeah, I've got a few things that, uh, that I'd like to do that I've, that, that, I, again, I mean, you know, I, I produced this film and so I figured out, I've, I've sort of experienced filmmaking in a different way as well. And, and so, um, I have a couple of things that I feel like are producible and, you know, the industry, the industry is very interesting, in an interesting time right now, right? There's a lot of money going to like, you know, obviously the, the big tent poles and whatever. And there's just so much less money given to indies, you know? So there, it's it's this weird equation of like, what are people going to put money into and what are the stories that we can make that are going to work? And so, but so anyway, yes, right. It's a long-winded, long-winded way of saying that I have a couple of scripts ready to go that I'd love to make. Are you going to be in Austin for yeah, Fantastic Fest? I am. I'm looking forward to it. I've never been to Austin or Fantastic Fest, so I'm, I'm really stoked. I'm really looking forward to it. On that note, uh, thank you for spending time here answering some questions. Uh, what you wish for um, is already played at Fantasia Fest and is playing at Fantastic Fest in Austin, Texas. Its first show time is Friday, September 22nd at 8.15 p.m. Austin time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I hope it's a really fun festival for you. I know it's a pretty wild, it's a wild one. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it.